Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be focused on a regular banner that you'd post in maybe an info channel or for an announcement. Now this banner style has some qualities of past banners I've made. More specifically, one of the, the first banner tutorial I uploaded to the channel and then a couple of the ones that came after it. But as you can see, this one has a few unique takes and overall it's a much simpler design to make because there's a lot less parts that are being overlaid on top of this background layer. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the tutorial. I'm going to start off by creating a new canvas and the size that we want to use is 1200. And then for the width, we want about 530. Click create. And of course, delete the backgrounds because we don't need that going to go over to your rounded rectangle. I'm going to drop it down about this. And then for the width, well, let's make that visible first. For the width, what we're going to want to do is have it at 1140. And then for the height, we want 295. Great. Then we move it about here. And then for the edges, we're going to want to do 62 pixels. And that is our initial layer that we'll be working off for the rest of the project. Now, before we get into doing anything else, let's just wrap up our changes to the base by going to stroke and making sure we add a seven pixel stroke with the color white. Hit okay. Then we're gonna do control G. We're gonna call this the base area. We're gonna call this the actual base. And now we can start overlaying on top of the space all the different assets we're going to be using. Let's make a new layer and we're first going to grab, I believe it's this one. Yep. Just drag that over. And normally upscaling is frowned upon, but in this case, we're going to be adding a slight blur and blurriness of this part, which is what happens when you upscale in the first place is what the intended look is going to be. So it's not too big of an issue. So you're going to go to filter, blur gallery, field blur, and let's add about three to two pixels of blur. Let's probably go with three. Great. Next, we can actually close out of that. We're going to go to our dot pattern, drag that over. Let's just call this the main overlay. We can call this the dots. Control T, let's resize the dots. Let's put them about, actually here is good. Do Control J, Control, or actually don't do Control, go to the Move tool and drag it over. It lines up perfectly actually. So we can go ahead and merge this down. We can go to Blending Options, Color Overlay, and we're gonna make these dots white. Rasterize that and then clip that on as well. Let's actually make this whole folder orange just to keep track of things. And the dots are going to be at a 27% opacity, but 30 is a nice number to round to. All right, next we're going to grab these chocolate drips and we're going to drag them over, drop them down, do Control T, going to resize them until they're at an okay size. We don't want them to be too large so that you can see all of this huge empty space, but we want it to be large enough that it goes to about a third of the page down, maybe a bit more, just like so. That should be okay, maybe a little bit larger. That should be fine. Now before we decide which color we're going to make this entire drip strip, let's close out of the chocolate drips and drag over our character model that we're going to be using. Let's move her outside of that folder. Let's give her green, name her model. Do control T, go to the width, add a negative sign so it flips. Do control T again, or it could have just stayed in that. And let's move her to about... Here is good. 
And then let's go into her blending options, add a drop shadow. That's actually perfect. 321704. Go ahead and rasterize that. Drop the opacity. Want to come over here and make sure nothing is sticking outside the frame. So go to your rectangular marquee tool, move up, delete the excess, grab your pen tool, come to this corner, click there, and then click there while still holding onto the mouse and drag so the corner is matched. And go all the way around, make selection, hit OK, and delete. Now our character is perfectly in frame. And now we're going to sample a color from her hair. We're going to grab maybe this pink. I'm going to go to blending options, color overlay. I'm going to grab this pink right there. Hit OK. I'm going to rasterize that layer style. Then we're going to go on to blending options again. I'm going to go to stroke, make it about five pixels. Then we're going to go on to pattern overlay. And for this pattern, we're going to want to use a grid shape. Let's see, maybe that. Let's try 30 and then say 342. Maybe a little bit less with the opacity, a bit more. That should be fine. And I'll have this pattern link in the description so you can download it for yourself. And then the last step will be adding a drop shadow. And for this, we want 321704. So perfect. It remembered from the past projects or the past mock up I did before the actual video. Now we might come back and actually change the color because it is a little light. I dropped it down because normally when you add a pattern, it does darken it a little bit. As you can see. But I made it a bit too light, and then we can adjust that in just a moment. We'll call this strips. Okay, and then we're going to create a new layer, create a clipping mask. We're going to go over to our ellipse tool. We're going to want about five pixels for the stroke. Make sure you're on the stop pattern, or sorry, the st stroke option. And make sure it is rounded for the edges. And then drop it down about like that. And we'll put it maybe here and let's add a little drop shadow to that one let's make it 16 16 and then 6 we're going to do a control J let's make sure we hide the effects I'm going to drag that over just so it looks like there's something going on on that side of her Going to create a new layer, going to clip that as well. We're going to go over to our rectangle tool. This time we want maybe four pixels. Hold shift while you drag to get a appropriately sized rectangle. Go to control T, move it so that it is a diamond. Put one about here. Great, and we'll do one more. And this one can go about there. Okay, and before I get too far ahead of myself, I will just come back to these drips and fix the color. So I'm going to copy the layer style, clear layer style, go to blending options, color overlay, and let's go to this, the pink. Let's make it a little lighter this time, but not too light. Let's see if that's going to work. Rasterize, paste, and yeah, that is a lot better than it was before. Great, so let's name this circle right, just to keep ourselves organized. Circle left, rec left, and then rec right. And that should really finish up the backgrounds, and then we can move on to our text layer. So it's control G, let's make this blue, we'll call this the text. And then we're going to move on to our text tool and we're going to drop down the words, the word events, 
hit OK. And the font we're using is New Comic BD, which is the same one I used in all of the past banners. Let's make sure it is about center. It's perfect. We're going to go onto the folder first, and we're going to go into Blending Options. We're going to add a stroke. 5, 100, and then a drop shadow of 32, and then 17, and 4. Okay, and now we're going to go on to blending options, gradient overlay, and we're going to just sample colors from the character model herself. So let's grab a pinkish, let's say... Something a bit darker. That should be good. And then go on to the blue. And let's say... There. That looks good. We can hit OK. Now for the opacity, we want it to be at 100, and the scale, we want to bring it down to 65, and then the angle, about 90%, and hit OK. Now, you're going to want to create a backup of this layer. The reason being is the idea with these templates is you make it once, and then you come back to it in the future, and you reuse it and make small modifications for new banners, just so you don't have to spend time remaking everything. So this one right here, we can go ahead and hide that. And this is our new layer, which we're going to rasterize. And then we're going to come over to our low poly. We're going to drag it over, drop it down, go on to hard light and the opacity at 50%. We're going to create a clipping mask. We'll call this the overlay. We're going to do control T and move it in about that fashion. Scale it up a little bit and then adjust it until you have a nice balance of colors. And I'm pretty content with that. So hit OK and then our text layer is done. Now for this last part, it's completely optional if you want to do it or not, but we're going to be adding that little tiny piece across the top. Now for past banners, what I would do is add, add little shapes along the top area to kind of symbolize what that specific banner is for. But this is sort of an alternative way to add a little bit more to that top section. So we're gonna have a new layer. We're gonna do Control G and make sure it's below the base. Let's say violet for the color. Okay, and then we're gonna go and grab the rectangle tool. We're gonna drop down a rectangle with a black fill, no stroke. Let's put it about there. Let's move it down a little bit. Great. Make sure the edges are curved a bit, just enough that you can still kind of see that there's a small straight area. Then control T and move it over until it's hiding behind the character itself. And for this right part, it doesn't really matter how far over you move it. I like to have a decent amount of space between the end of this and the end of the actual banner. So I'm going to leave it off right there. And I'll adjust a little bit more down using my arrow keys. All right, we can come over to the actual folder. We can name it top section, blending options, pattern overlay. And we're going to be doing a line pattern for this one. Let's go with maybe that. And then we're going to go with 18 and 149. Hit OK. Now for this section, we can just copy the layer style of this text layer that has the gradients. We can paste it over there. And then we can rasterize it. Then we can copy this, drag it over and we can make sure it is clipped on and then transform it until it's in a nice position. Hit OK. Go back to the bottom, add a stroke of seven pixels and that's gonna match this outside border. And then opacity is perfect. 
hit OK. And then let's just make sure it's all purple and it's properly named so we can easily find everything. And let's call this the base. Now this would essentially wrap up this banner, but I do want to make a couple adjustments. I'm going to come into the space area. I'm going to move this down a bit just so that purple in the corner isn't so prominently displayed. And then for the character model, I want to go into image, adjustments, brightness, contrast drop the brightness a tad and up the contrast. As you can see, it makes her a little dark. Now this is definitely a personal preference. You don't have to do that, but I think it looks a little better to have the character be a tad darker. Hit OK. And then that's it. I'll have all of these files available for you to download in the description, along with a link to the font and the two different types of patterns that we use in this tutorial. Now this was pretty simple to make and I'll have on screen a link to another video with a tutorial that's similar to this and you've probably already seen it, but it's still another take on this kind of style. Thanks for much watching and have an awesome day.